a very warm welcome to everyone joining us today um, for this membership webinar focusing on getting registered and joining SciWEM as a technician member. My name is Barbara Orth. I am Senior Membership and Professional Standards um, Executive here at SciWEM, and it's my pleasure to host this uh, webinar today. I am joined by Oliver Greeson, um, our very own <laughs> Tech SciWEM champion from whom you will hear uh, a little bit more once uh, we've kind of gone through the presentation section um, of this webinar. And um, so what is the purpose of this webinar? Well, as it says on the tin, we're going to be talking about Tech SciWEM membership. Uh, to give you a brief overview of the structure of what will happen today and what we'll be talking about, you will hear a brief presentation from myself around you know, the practicalities and the requirements of applying for, for this membership grade, um, following which um, we will have a conversation with Oliver um, who, who will use his vast experience to hopefully give us some useful tips and tricks um, on, you know, applying for, for, for text by when. And then following which I will just open the floor um, to any questions from the audience. So yes, do please send in any questions that you may have. Um, so really, what, let's start with what is um, text by when, so technician member. Um, it's very much a standalone membership grade, and it's a qualification that recognizes the practical experience and knowledge that you have gained in the water and environment sectors. And it also acknowledges the skills that you have attained. It provides the assurances sought by employers, clients, peers, and the public that you are dedicated to forwarding water and environmental management, and that you are keen to develop your skills further. As an experienced practitioner with the knowledge and wish to drive change in the environment, this SIWA membership, so this grade, will broaden your knowledge and expand your learning to support your career development. It will also give you access to the fantastic network that we have at SIWEM, um, as well as give you, you know, the opportunity to make, to make an, a real change and an input into the water and environmental sector from a technician point of view. In terms of who is um, eligible to apply for technician membership, it's really anyone who has practical experience in a water or, or environmental discipline. Um, this may have been gained through an apprenticeship or having completed a relevant course, such as a NEBOSH environmental management course. Um, furthermore, we also require any applicant to have between three to five years of industry experiment, uh, experience. Now, while this is not a hard and fast rule, typically applicants with fewer years of experience will not have the necessary knowledge base to meet the mandatory competencies at the required standard. So that, that is something, obviously we will not deter you from applying, but that is something that you, know, you may wish to, to, to keep in mind. Uh, to give you a brief overview of what we require, what is expected from a tech SIWEM application, um, really the very first simple step is to create a SIWEM account. If you already have one, then you can start uh, an application through your already existing um, SIWEM account, my SIWEM account. Um, and create, complete an online application form. Now, application form, it might be a le little bit misleading. It's really just the individual tabs on the online portal that will need to be completed and submitted. This is what we mean by application form. You'll see this, this term popping up um, throughout all our guidance documents, um, but just so you know that this is what we mean. Uh, then the next very simple uh, step, it really <laughs> is what it says on the tin, just we require a copy of your most up-to-date CV. Um, any standard CV will do. Usually we recommend applicants to, to submit a professional CV as personal details, you know, things like email address, address, hobbies will be edited out and redacted anyway. Um, carrying on, you will also uh, need to submit a career overview report. Um, I usually encourage applicants to think of this as a narrative of their career today. So starting with, you know, your, your any, quali any qualifications that you may have and, and detailing any kind of key um, career moments, projects uh, that you've been involved with that have led you to, to, to where you are um, currently. Now, I think this is the only element of the application that we do not have a guidance document for simply because it's so tailored to each individual applicant um, that having something set in stone is not, you know, perhaps not the most helpful. But yeah, just view it as a narrative. Um, and again, perhaps don't include things like personal details as the career overview report has a maximum word limit of a thousand words. So you wouldn't want that, you know, any kind of unnecessary detail to take up that, that, that word limit. Um, you will also need to submit a CPD record. Now, 
this the CPD is for, for many people is a bit of a boogeyman. People either love it or hate it. Unfortunately, it, it is a it is a requirement. Um, but we see a lot of applicants struggling with their CPD. Um, this is usually down to two reasons. One of them is either because they've not started recording it um, early on, and then it comes to the point of where they're applying, and then you have to you know, think back over three years worth of CPD that you've done and try to record it, which even the thought of it is, is, is quite daunting, to be honest. So if you're one of those people, do start recording your CPD. No, there's no time like the present and start with um, this, this, this webinar. Um, oh, Barbara, I'll interrupt you there. Uh, a yeah. bit of help on CPD. Uh, I actually recorded earlier on this week a discussion with a fellow member of the PSC, fellow member of the Professional Standards Committee, and we've recorded a sort of very down to earth sort of good good practice guide for CPD. Um, what you probably find is in your day job, uh, especially as a technician, you're doing courses like first aid at work, confined spaces, um, all the good stuff that you have to do anyway as part part of your day job. That all counts as CPD. So confined uh, first aid at work, typically a couple of days. That's 16 hours CPD straight off. You only have to do 30 hours of CPD in a year. Guess what? After that, it's pretty, pretty simple stuff. So Definitely, don't yeah. be scared of CPD. No, absolutely. That was going to be my next point. I think it's just the, the, you know, as you said, we have so many resources available to kind of debunk the myth of scary CPD, uh, because if you think about it, it's actually quite easy to, to record. And if you think about it, some of the compulsory elements that we have for CPD, you know, things like uh, future planning or key benefits, if you really think about it, there should be easy elements of, to, to complete for each CPD activity. So if you don't, if you're listening in and you don't really know where to start with CPD, then do I do recommend that you check out all those resources that we have. Um, then moving on, uh, we will also require you to submit copies of any academic certificates and course breakdowns. Now, simply for validation and authentication purposes, these will need to be signed by one of your sponsors just to make sure that you know they've, they've, they've seen it and it is an authentic copy of, of your certificate. And as well as providing a list of all the training that you have completed, you will have the opportunity to do this on the online application portal. Or if you so choose to, you can always upload a separate document as part of as a you know, supporting document. Uh, moving on, very, very important uh, of having two sponsors who are chartered professionals. One of them will need to be chartered with SIWEM, um, and they will also need to submit letters um, to confirm that they have reviewed and they support your application. I think Oliver will agree with me here that, you know, that I, we cannot emphasize the importance of sponsors and relying and asking for their guidance um, because, you know, don't, we encourage you to not treat it as a requirement tick box as you know, having a, having a sponsor who reviews your application can really make the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful submission. Oliver, do you want to jump in at this point? I, th I think I probably will. Um, rather thinking of it as a sp sponsor, think of it as a mentor. Um, this could be your boss, your team leader, your, your whatever, uh, somebody within your organization. Uh, SIWEM do actually have a mentoring platform as well. So you can connect with like minded individuals. I am also for an absolute special for tech SIWEM. Through LinkedIn, I have set up a Tech SIWEM mentoring group. I am over time recording videos on that mentoring group, taking you through each of these stages. Um, I will be, I am organizing it in my spare time, which is about between 2 and 2.30 in the morning normally. Um, <laughs> so I am sort of setting up a doodle poll and allowing, a, a blocking off a couple, couple of hours in, in the week to help people through so do connect with me on LinkedIn uh, and I'll invite you to that group and it's a, it's just an area that I'm reserving for tech so I'm, I'll continue on this a little bit later but um, I'll let you know my vision for tech so I'm in the future and I'll let you know why after Barbara's had her words so Barbara I'll let you take over 
I was just going to say that you're kind of jumping on the ideas that I was going to ask you about a bit later on. <laughs> so That's all right. Let's not give away everything just off, off, off the bat. But yeah, thank you so much for that. So we do try to offer as much support as we can. And Oliver has been a great champion, you know, the, the godfather of textile, <laughs> if, if, if you like, in, in helping us establish that. Um, and just quickly, just to complete and wrap up on the application requirements, uh, we have the 14 mandatory competencies. These form the absolute core of your application. So if everything else is fine, this will really be the core of what you will be assessed against and what your application will be assessed against. So do take the time to, to, to write those down, jot down some ideas. Um, I know, Oliver, I can see that you're, you're, you're keen to jump in, but perhaps if we have a bit of a top tip section in the Q&A, then we yeah. can cover the mandatory competencies then as well, if that's okay. Just so we can move on and just get the kind of dry and boring application requirements out of the way first, and then we can move on to the more fun bits um, of, 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 of tips. Oops, sorry. Um, and just to give you an overview um, of what we, ex you know, what mandatory competencies actually entail. Now, these are grouped into five subgroups. So you can see there on your screen, we have the A competencies, which focus on sector um, and industry knowledge and understanding. So here you will have competencies to, try to test your um, knowledge of your industry and how it fits both in the water and environmental industry, as well as in the wider global environment. Then you will also have a competency that asks you to demonstrate how you apply your water and environmental knowledge in your day-to-day -day job, as well as whether you know any main issues affecting your part in the water and environment sector. Then we have the B competencies, which are all about working methods. So it's, this gives you an opportunity to detail how you work from a water and environmental uh, perspective. So how do you solve a water or environmental problem within your day-to-day -day role? Or you know, how you have worked both individually or you know, taking responsibility for your own work or as part of a team as well, so not just individually. Then we have the C competencies, which is all about health and safety. Um, you know, so again, you will need to demonstrate how you work safely. Um, you know, you will also be able, um, you will also be required to demonstrate that you are aware of best practice um, and good standard of work. So all these elements. Moving on, we have the um, D competencies. So these are all around communication, uh, professionalism and ethics. So you will be asked to demonstrate, um, you know, that you work professionally, ethically and, you know, comply with the relevant code of conduct. I'm going to come in with a quick tip here. Make sure you, that you do familiarize yourself with the codes of conduct, not just of your company, but also of SIWEM. <laughs> so that, that's already, a, you know, a, a tick. Um, you know, for, for, for a good application there. And then finally, moving on to the e-competencies, uh, you know, you, be, uh, you have to demonstrate your commitment to the water and environmental profession. So whether that's by developing yourself in a structured manner um, or whether that's by demonstrating your uh, current or future commitment to SIWEM. So these are kind of the, 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 the uh, this is a brief overview of the competencies that you'll be required to meet as part of your application. I'm sure Oliver will have a few more tips um, as we go on later on. Um, before I close this um, presentation, I will just quickly mention that if you are applying for TechSiWan, you are also given the opportunity to register as an engineering technician with the UK Engineering Council. Um, because of time constraints, I won't go into the nitty gritty of what that application actually requires. If this is something that you're interested in, that we do have a separate webinar recording available um, that focuses solely on registering as an engineering professional through the UK Engineering Council. Um, so do make sure that, that, that you check that out um, along with any other supporting documents and materials that we have. Um, but just to give you a, a quick idea of a, a sort of the practicalities around it, you can apply for both within the same application. So you can submit an application for Tech Biwem and EngTech at the same time. Uh, something to consider is that if you are applying for EngTech, that you will also require a sponsor or a mentor who is registered with the Engineering Council, as well as the fact that engineering technician comes with its own mandatory competencies that will need to be uh, met and completed. So those are some of the key things to bear in mind if that is something um, you're looking to do. Uh, I'll, I'll jump in there, Barbara, okay. if you go back, back for me. 
Now, all of that sounds a bit daunting. Um, <laughs> really, it sounds a bit formal and daunting. And oh my God, how much paperwork am I going to have to fill in? Realistically, if you're, I particularly was keen on championing tech IOM because I've done a lot of field work in my time. I've spoken to a lot of operators on the front line of the water and street in my time. The overriding opinion is, well, professional registration, you've got to have a degree for that. So I was very keen to get involved because I know there is a whole part of the industry, the water and environment industries that are unrepresented at the professional organization like SIWEM level. I would expect anyone who's worked in the field to absolutely be able to write the C competencies right now without a thought. Um, probably the A comp competencies as well as, as the B competencies. So realistically, it sounds daunting, but with a bit of mentoring, with a bit of advice, it's not that difficult. Uh, equally, one thing with uh, if you are into gangs for eng tech, so somebody with a mechanical or electrical um, or even a civil background, so out there doing pump maintenance, instrument maintenance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, eng tech is definitely for you. Um, there is also something called eng spec. Eng spec is something produced by the Engineering Council, and it's their they're almost their Bible of what they're expecting from not just technicians, but everyone all the way up to chartered, chartered engineers, technician members, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the day, that's what we as assessors have to assess somebody to. So if you've, if you've read and an, an understood EngSpec, again, it's not that difficult. The Engineering Council has produced a really brilliant document that will help you through. What I can't stress, and we say this doesn't matter if you're applying for tech, SIWEM, or chartered, CWEM, mentoring, really, really important for somebody to get to talk, somebody to talk you through the application process, understand what, what's needed. There's always help available for you. Now, my motivation, why tech SIWEM? Um, I've dealt with a lot of technicians. I deal with a lot of technicians in my day job. And as I've just said, I feel the tech technicians in the industry, a huge group of very important people. And I realize a lot of people will be watching this back because guess what? They're in the field right now doing the job. So that's why the, the recording of this is, is so important. People in the field can't always watch this. Um, so if you are watching this back, thank you for watching it back. Um, but there's, there's almost a master plan on this. It's, it's get enough tech, tech SIOM, get enough technicians into SIOM, help them through the process, up to engineering technician. I'm badgering the executive of, of the Science Council and the Environment and Society for the Environment as well for those qualifications, if they're interested, if people are interested and set up a community. Um, I, years ago, um, one of a good friend who's a technician who I still work with, uh, applied for, um, actually applied through the IET. Sorry, Barbara. Um, he applied for the IET, got his, en <laughs> got, got, got his eng tech and um, really, didn't stay with the IET because actually he, he felt that relevance wasn't there for him. So I'm mentoring a group of people through right now, and I'm hoping they're almost going to be the pioneers of, of tech SIWEM and set up a community so people within the water environment industries at the technician level can work and collaborate together through tech SIWEM, through a tech SIWEM community. So that's my that motivation. Yeah, I think this brings us quite nicely into opening the, 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 the kind of conversation section of this webinar. So I'm going to invite the audience members to send in questions if they have. And just kind of, I'd like to take a step back if that's okay, Oliver. And you know, you're, you're a fellow of SIWEM, you know, you're, you're a member of the, and vice chair of the Professional Standards Committee, and you've really kind of grabbed this tech SIWEM ball by its horns. 
So um, just taking that step back and for you as a professional, from a professional perspective, I, you touched a bit on this, but like what is Tech Taiwan really? So, and, and kind of what, what, what does it mean? What, what, and why is it so important to have this kind of standalone technician grade? For me, I feel that the technician, the frontline operator within the water and environment industries, be they an operator of a wastewater treatment works, a mechanic, electrician, um, are underrepresented. And they are the heart and soul of industry. Without the technicians on the front line, nothing happens. They know what's going on in the front line. They know how, I'm, I'm a wastewater person, so I'm always gonna use the wastewater an analogy. They know how a wastewater treatment works is operating. They know how their plant works. They know the individual quirks. That is a very, very valuable skill to have. And that is a skill that, to be honest, the, the chartered engineers, the chartered, chartered people in, in the industry are missing that, that level of practicality. Um, and I'm, I'm very happily admit that there's, there's some practicality that myself as a, a fellow of I don't know how many organizations now and charts all over the place I miss I miss the practicality of it and I realize the importance of it and so that's why I am very keen to try and start the ball rolling on tech SIWEM, try and get a community established so the community can help itself and yes my long-term medium to long-term aim is is to have a community so that um, a technician from Seven Trent, which is the, the region I live in, can communicate with a technician in Anglian Water, can communicate with a, a technician wherever. But also I'm, I'm an instrumentation geek, an instrumentation specialist, especially on flow, flow monitoring. Um, I also see the skill and the importance of the skill in the industry in instrumentation um, I talk to clients all the time and that they say, we can't get instrument tech for love nor money. Um, we just can't get them. Now that tells me there's something that we need to encourage at the technician level. Now I do that, I run an instrumentation apprentice competition, try and get apprentices involved more in instrumentation. But what else is there? what is there for the operators on the front line, what's there for the mechanics, the electricians, the, the people who, who do the day job, get the job done, mm -hmm. really. And that those people are so important for the industry. And so they should be represented. Absolutely, and I think we've already established how important it is to have this kind of network um, of, 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 of technicians, but kind of just going quickly back to, to, to that idea of, you know, we, we need, these professionals. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the simple answer: yes, we need technicians. But what does it actually entail? So, what kind of people would be suitable for this? For, for what kind of professions would be suitable for, for this membership grade? You you covered it slightly earlier. Um, three to five years experience is, is what I'd expect most people to have. Um, I'm personally thinking wastewater wastewater operators. Um, if you operate a post post water treatment plant, equally the same. You, you're a, a field technician for an instrumentation company, installing stuff, uh, installing instruments. You're, you're going out and servicing screens. You're going out and anything within the water and environment industry, typically not degree qualified. Um, doesn't stop you applying if you have got a degree qualification, but really, if you have got that, then you should be considering a path towards charge ship, um, but somebody who's on the front line of the industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, seeing as you've mentioned it, can you, you know, one of my next questions would be, because obviously, you know, you're looking at progression and progression perhaps for your SIWEM membership. Would you also then be able to apply for charter ship? So say you're a technician right now, would you encourage applicants to then go for charter ship at a later point? So even if you don't have a necessary qualification, perhaps for an experience-based um, route? There, there is there is that but I mean it's experiential 
the experiential route for, for a chartered person without a degree qualification is normally 10 to 15 years. So you're going, well, what do I do in that, that first 10 to 15 years of my career? Well, I'm not involved at all. So this, this kind of fills that gap. So somebody with three years experience in the industry has been operating plant or commissioning plant or even as a data analyst in a control center. Anyone who's working at, at that sort of technician level um, can apply, a sample technician can apply um, so what fills the gap between how do you get that experience for the experiential route and some of the best candidates i've ever seen through chart going for their charters have come through the experiential route um, how, what do i do in the meantime and tech siwem is, is that is that sort of gap in gap in there and yes there will be people hopefully with time who, who take the tech siren route and go up to that experiential route if they want to if they need to mm -hmm. and i realize this might be that maybe a perhaps difficult question to ask because everyone's journey is, is so individually specific is do you have an idea of um perhaps a career journey of a a text I went, would you do could you provide us an example of kind of you know of what like what, what your idea is or typically what it what it would be so somebody comes in um somebody does an apprenticeship electrician does an apprenticeship he does his does all his he or him or her does the mvqs that you're doing as part of your apprenticeship gets normally a whole re 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 ream of city and guild certificates and etc 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 um goes to work for a water company they're working as a mechanic electrician an operator three to five years and going guess what i want to do a little bit more how do i how do i get that little bit more um actually one of the candidates i'm i'm actually starting to mentor through through the LinkedIn group I've set up is a guy who is doing his, his advanced license to operate. And part of that, um, that will tell you the company, if you're aware of that sort of thing, part of his advanced license to operate is to get recognized by a professional organization. So he is, I think he's a, a mechanic, mechanical uh, technician and frontline um, guy. He's been a, a mechanical technician for quite a number of years and he's now progressing in his in his in his work and he's going well what else can i do what else can i do to progress up taking his advanced license to operate getting registered through tech siwem now i had a long chat with him he went oliver what's appropriate for me i said well really it's a personal choice you're actually working in the water environment industry, so consider tech SIOM. But actually, at the same time, we could we could work on Eng Tech for you at the same time. Work together on that, and work through the process. And yeah, in five years' time, he could go up to uh, maintenance manager, treatment manager, and then start thinking about chartership after that, with experience and time. So it's always been, oh, well, I don't have a degree as being a barrier. And it's a complete and utter fallacy. Absolute nonsense. Absolutely. Um, just before we move on quickly into the more nitty gritty of, of, of the questions, um, I'm just going to remind the audience members to send in their questions if they, if, if they have any. So yeah, please, please, please do message us um, with any questions that you may have. Um, now, Oliver, just, You've mentioned this before briefly, but I'm just going to take you in a bit more detail, if that's okay, about the mandatory competencies and how you know how important <clears throat> that is. Yeah. Um, and just thinking about thinking about it in a way where you know you an applicant might be thinking of applying for Tech IOM and they're looking at this mandatory competency report and they're thinking, oh my goodness, this is a huge volume of work. So, what are your kind of tips? you know, step by step of how to think of completing the report, you know, including like, you know, what projects to choose, you know, 
what how many projects achieved because these are also questions that fre frequently come up so it's not all about the projects for one <laughs> so sorry about that barbara but i mean <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> first thing first mentoring um there are there's a Cywen platform of mentoring there's a linkedin group as well i'm recording videos of okay how how does an assessor think when they're looking at at these competencies um so i will be through linkedin recording a whole load of videos on that um that group is a closed group so you have to come to me to, to join that group i've kept it closed because i don't want sorry interlopers going in there i just want people who are applying for tech so I to be in there or eng tech in there um and so I will be recording videos and hint, hints and tips of, of how to answer the questions. It does seem very overwhelming to start off with, but with the right mentoring, it's not that difficult. So health and safety, probably the easiest question. It's one that, that I've seen answered so badly at the chartered level, and I've seen answered very well at the chartered level. I think the, um, the funniest one was, um, well, funny in a way, but very unfunny in another, that somebody answered their health and safety going, well, my idea of health and safety is I evacuate the lads that I work with when we start getting shot at. And you're going, okay, it's not the traditional thought of health and safety, but guess what? This guy is really thinking of health and safety of his staff. Um, but actually, guess what? Health and safety for guys in the field who have done it, it's second to none. It comes in every day. It's loan working. It's um, dealing with contractors on site who are going, OK, where's your rams? So straight away, that's, that's how I've dealt with contractors. I've had to review their rams and make sure they're safe on site. Um, I've had to make sure that the contractors know what they're doing and brief them on the dangers of the site that they're going to be working on health and safety i've had to make sure that um, my mate who has been working on something for me doesn't kill himself health and safety that also comes into man management contractors there's a section in there in one of the com competencies how do you manage resources or manage your own time etc 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 that's in there as well so when you start thinking about it, you're going, well, actually, it's just describing my day job. Is there an element of knowledge of legislation in, the, in there as well, I'm presuming? Not, not, partic not, not particularly, to be honest. It, it's, not, it's, it's being aware of safe systems of work and how to apply them. And for people in the field who are on the front line of, of any industry, you're going to be very aware of that very very aware of that it's knowing not to stick yet stick your hand in the in a low voltage panel uh, making sure it's locked um, reporting health and safety incidents and all those sort of things which we don't think of as part of the day job but those are demonstrating health and safety competencies management competencies managing contractors absolutely valid all part of your day job, job mm -hmm. done, managing your own time. Guess what? That's the competence dem demonstrated. So in about five minutes there, I would expect most people on the front line of, of any industry to be able to, to answer that set of competencies very quickly. When you start going into the next set, um, ethics and communication, guess what? That could be talking at a team meeting. That could be briefing each other at a team meeting. That could be a toolbox talk, which also comes into health and safety. That could be, there's numerous ways of applying it. Absolutely numerous. Ethics makes everyone think, think going, oh my God, ethics. Well, yeah, part of it is the anti-bribery and corruption, all that sort of stuff. When you look at spec, the engineers, engineers actually do it well. Am I competent to rewire that flow meter? Oh, well, I'm not a Sparky. I've got no electrical qualifications. 
better not do that. There's ethics for you. Quite simple, really. Um, a competences, knowledge about the wider industry. Where does the water industry fit or where does the environment industry fit into everything you, you do on a day job? So I'm going to fall back on my wastewater analogy. I know not to open, open a valve that's going to dump something to the environment because guess what? That's, that's absolutely relevant to the pollution scandal that's going on at the minute. That's the A competences. Or people usually struggle with the wider environmental issues. You know, you, you feel like you, assessors kind of always or interviewers catch people out with their A competencies because applicants have the tendency to very much focus on their own individual yeah. like working experience rather than thinking in the broader picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the A competencies at the charter level it is the wider environmental um, understanding. At the technician level, it is how does the water industry fit into the wider environment. So one of the things that anyone can talk about, net zero. Okay, let's make sure our wastewater, let's make sure the DO probes on our wastewater plant are operating correctly. So, because if they're not, they're gonna consume a whole load more energy. Hey, awareness of net zero. But talking about net zero, talking about a wider environmental issue that you're aware of and that's all that a1 is really a2 um it's it's strategies within the water industry well we're all aware in the water industry it's all about net zero at the minute it's all about pollutions at the minute it's all about leakage at the minute those are areas that most people in the water industry should be able to do, or environment industry should be able to do should be able to to talk about of course depending what industry you're in within the water environment industries it's going to change a little bit but mm -hmm. it's not it, it's basic stuff i think most people in the industry would know of be your day-to-day -day job be confident to your day-to-day -day job as you said earlier barbara mm -hmm. I think here it might be just uh, useful to share some practical information in terms of, you know, you have a word limit for, for the mandatory competencies, um, but inevitably some competencies, some answer will take up less and like communication always takes up fewer words and then you might want to spend that word allocation on another competency to, to, to develop it. So there is no hard and fast rule of, oh, you have to have this many words for all, you know, competencies. You see, it was different in my day. We had 150... 150 uh, word, word limit for each competency so i know tell me about it how <laughs> yeah well mm -hmm. that 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 was the bad old days so mm -hmm. but no um anyone there are mentors out there who will help you if mm -hmm. not join me on linkedin and i'll brief you through it video there's, there's going to be videos available there's going to be guides available Eng specs on there. I'm going to pers persuade Barbara to to give me a copy of this this to put on there and everything else. There are resources available to help you. If not, ask the questions. Absolutely. I'm just going to jump in there, Oliver, and say that you know the the Taiwan membership executive is always you know available to answer any questions you may have. Um, so whether you'd like to get touched via email or via the phone. We're here to answer questions that you have. So our email address is membership at um, The phone number, I'm sorry, I don't know by heart, but it's on our website, um, so, so it's available. Do give us a call, do write to us if you have any questions. Um, and in addition to that, we have so many guidance documents available for download, both on the website and on the online application portal. And we do recommend that you read through those guidance documents as they really provide you with that first step of, you know, first batch of information that you require um, to kind of get an idea of what is expected from, from each application. Um, so, yeah, I, we always recommend that you read um, through those. Now, just moving on from, I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on the time, um, Oliver, just moving on from the mandatory competencies a little bit. And we've talked about this briefly, but I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about CPD and the importance of it. And you said that you, you've done a session um, not that long ago about CPD, but I was wondering if you could just give us a summary um, you know, a taster of, of, of that session that you did. Lovely. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, I, I recorded uh, with a fellow member of the PSC this week um, a session, so it's not quite available as yet, but I'm sure it will be available. CPD, 
there's a trick to CPD, um, and it's actually not to think of CPD in it on its own, but something called CDP, and those among the engineers, and it's in EngSpec, et cetera, um, will be aware of it. It's the career development plan. Where do you want your career to go? Now, as a technician, you're going to be required to do a certain amount of courses, confined, normally confined space, health and safety, health and safety courses, could be a first aid course, could be whatever. Um, CPD is a minimum of 30 hours uh, a year, but it's, um, it's actually expressed as 90 hours over three years because it's recognised that, guess what? some people have oh have a life and sometimes actually in a year you're not able to do it all so that's why they say 90 hours over three years part of being professionally registered is to make sure what you are doing in your career is of benefit is to make sure that you are trying to develop yourself so in reality in your pdrs sit down with your boss sit down with your gaffer and discuss okay i'm quite happy what i'm doing but actually i'd like to broaden my horizons in this way write all that down and guess what your goals for the year are your cdp it's your career development plan now that could be technical i.e your, 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 your normal courses or that could be, I don't know, I want to become a, an assistant manager. Or I want to become a manager over, over time. How do I do that within the organisation? And then that comes around to your basic your delivery plan. That's your delivery plan. Actually delivering it is your professional development. Rinse and repeat. Keep on going on that, on that way. And that, that's your CPD done. But if you really think about it, on your day-to-day -day, team meetings could be CPD. This could be CPD. There are so many webinars, um, recordings, um, technical stuff out there that you can watch. That can be CPD. Um, it could be chatting with a supplier. Um, depending on what your interest within the industry, there's loads of stuff out there quite a lot of it nowadays for free that you can do so you don't even need to go to your boss and ask can i do this course well guess what just log on, on online on your phone or whatever and and watch an hour's webinar that's cpd as long as it's providing benefit to your professional career as long as it's developing you, you you in some way that is cpd and a lot of people even going for their charters even going for their fellowships, get this wrong. It isn't difficult. I think a key point that you made there, Oliver, is that it, it, the CPD activity undertaken does need to be useful. And you know, the, you, you are required to demonstrate that you have applied it in, in, in your day-to-day -day work. Um, because we see CPD records, you know, when they mention watching some television show, you know, but then they also don't argument how that they've applied that knowledge in their day to day work. So that is perhaps a less positive example of CPD. A, a lot of it is have a plan, mm -hmm. have a plan in an area that you want to develop. CPD nowadays, I mean, in my day, it used to just be a line in an Excel sheet. I did this. It took this amount of time. Tick. Uh, nowadays, it's got to include some sort of self-reflection again what am I getting out of this? And actually, some, sometimes it's going to be, I did my mandatory com confined space because I have to as part of my job. Oh, okay, fine. And have to do it to do my day-to-day -day job. Guess what? That's still CPD. But some of it could be, well, actually, I wanted to investigate this for this reason, and this is how it helped. And actually, this is this is my next step on from there. It's being inquisitive, but I'm I'm guessing most people who are on this call or are watching this call actually want to do something with their career and develop. So if you want to do that, 
it's just about the application of your development. Thank you for that, Oliver. I think I think that's a great message to kind of debunk the scary myth of, 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 of CPD. Um, so so hopefully that's that, that's a good um, takeaway. Um, I'd like to just kind of one of our, one of my final questions is I'd like to just briefly talk about for all the engineers out there is in your opinion how would be the best way to think about an application that for, for a candidate who goes for both tech sitewem and for eng tech because obviously they come with different mandatory competencies. So in your opinion, what what is the best way of approaching that? <coughs> and thinking of it they do come with different mandatory competencies but actually quite a lot of those mandatory competencies are very similar when i worked with a, a colleague to to work him through to his tech side i actually gave him a couple of projects to deliver um and that's how he got his tech side went um and that could be looking at something um that you're doing your day-to-day -day job. If you're going French tech, you're, you're going to be a mechanical or electric, electric, electrically biased or temp, potentially an ICA technician on systems and controls and look at a job that you've done that actually worked quite well and use that, use that as an example. And when, when you actually sit down and think about it, guess what? It will come quite simply, quite easily. Absolutely. I think at this point, I'm just going to perhaps suggest we pause for a few minutes just to let that sink in um, with, with, with people listening in. Um, and yeah, again, if you have questions, let, let, let us know. Um, so I'm just going to I'm going to pause for, for, for one moment here to, 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 to allow for, for, for that information to sink in. And then after that, I'll perhaps ask Oliver to do a recap of all the top tips just so we have, a, have them in a more structured manner. So if I can just ask you to kind of recap the top, uh, top application tips, if you will, um, if I'm allowed that dramatic headline. You are, yeah. Top application tips. First things first, mentor. Absolutely big priority in all of the applications that I've seen over the years uh, working in the professional standards committees. It's perfectly obvious when somebody hasn't had a mentor and they're going, so how do I answer this question? So top tip number one, find a mentor. If not, sign a mentoring platform. If not, speak to me on LinkedIn. Top tip number one. Top tip number two, CPD. Tackle it nice and early. Um, have a think what you've done, what you do in your in your day to day job. Have a think how you've learned. That is basic. How, have a think how you've developed next pdr you have next review you have have a chat with your gaffer and say okay i want to put a career plan down here and that's that's your career development plan job done top tip number three what i ask anyone who i mentor the first thing i ask them to do is i don't quite ask them to do a cv cv and career overview report i ask them to bring it together into one document Sorry, Barbara, I might be cheating there. That's OK. We did just for reference, we do actually need the two separate documents at the, when you apply. <laughs> just um, throwing it in there. <laughs> guess what? Give them, a, give them a copy of the same document twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the end of the day, but have a think about it, because actually that helps you think who you are. It defines who you are. What we as assessors are normally looking at on a CV or career overview report is who are you? Have you actually had a career in the water environment? Or what have you done? When somebody's going for charter, it's have they developed in their career? Have they gone up in seniority and rank? Well, that's not necessarily relevant to Tech Siwem. You could have acted as an operator for 10 years. That's perfectly great. Guess what? I've worked on wastewater treatment plants for 10 years. This is what I've been doing. Here are some of the challenges I've had in those 10 years. Remember, most, most people learn through challenges. Here are some of the success stories I've had. I've worked with, who have you worked with in that time? If, you, if you've been an operator in the water industry for long enough, you'll have worked with contractors. Bound to have happened. Have you worked with those contractors? Have you understood what, you're, what they are doing and how that works, that fits into your day job? 
In fact, that's CPD straight off. That's expanding your knowledge straight off CPD. Um, career voter of report CV, guess what? It could be very short. Not, not, not be organized, get all your, your, your certificates together. That's, a, that's, that's the thing that anyone can do. As an operator in the field, you'll have done training courses, you'll have done MVQs, you'll have done city and guilds, you'll have done internal. Have a chat to your training department, because guess what? They've usually got your training records and they can give you straight away a complete list of the training that you've already done. Guess what? Just hand that straight over in your application. Job done. If you take your time and work methodically through it with some mentoring, it's not that difficult a process. Probably the most important tip, want to do it. If you're going, well, guess what? I'm applying for this because I have to apply for this. Mm, okay, it doesn't always work, but if you want to do it, that's one of the most important points. If you want to take that step and develop yourself, then yeah, do go for tech Cywen. Do go for Eng Tech. Oh, fantastic. That's so great to hear. I feel like you've rounded that off so nicely <laughs> because I was going to ask you for if you had any closing comments, but I feel like that that, that pretty kind of much it really nicely. <laughs> and and it's a case, if you want to develop yourself in the industry, then come and join us. Fantastic. I think I couldn't have said it any better myself. So um, I think that is a good point for us to, to conclude this uh, webinar today, um, unless there are any questions from the audience. But again, do email us, do check out the materials and the resources available on the website. Oliver, I'd like to thank you to, for, for taking the time from your extremely busy schedule for, to, to, to do this today. Um, I, I, I know how important it is and for, for us as well to develop this, 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 this membership grade um, going forward. To me, it's absolutely essential for the industry. So it, it's time well spent. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll let everyone go. Uh, wishing you a very, very um, happy Friday and a great weekend. Um, and yeah, look after yourselves.